All right, D-Led, in the holiday spirit. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Hey, they, um, uh, we didn't, uh, nobody asked about Calvin Ridley. We, uh, All right, so the weekly, the weekly, cl- yeah, we sure. I'm sure the fans Calvin. and your, and some of the, the bots want to know. So, um, same as it's been, and uh, as soon as I get a, uh, an update, you'll have an update. Have to check in on that. No, I appreciate it. due yeah. diligence. Yeah, and uh, uh, one thing I wanted to look at this week, um, but before we get to that, you know, I was looking at uh, short yardage. I did, they did a study, size versus speed, how to convert short yardage. And when you would say you're trying to get an advantage, that's you were trying to get an advantage in size yeah. versus speed. Yeah, and, and it, it's, a, it's a great – I mean, obviously those are critical downs. Um you know, it's, it's, there's different philosophies when you get to first and one or second and one. You know, some people generally, if you want to be riskier there, and there's all kind of different theories and whatnot. At the end of the day, and I think sometimes when you, you bundle those up, it's a, that's a false picture. But what you really got to look at is the critical downs. Because what happened after that, right? If you take a shot on second and one, you don't get it. You convert third down, sure. You lose a yard. Okay, now it becomes third and two. You convert. So that's not taken. There's a little bit, you know, it's not clean. A lot of like football, there's a lot of variables. Now you get in a critical yardage, right, situation, third and one, fourth and one. Um, so I believe we were 61% on the year on third and one. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were 68% last year when I was in Tennessee on third and one, give or take. So you've got to win those downs, and there's a lot that goes into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, you know, primitive, right up the middle, sneak, dives, bellies, whatever you want to call it, one back hitters. Mm-hmm. And it's all about matchups sometimes. And at the end of the day, um, where this game will never change, which I love about it, unless they completely fundamentally change the game, it's going to be about matchups up front. And there's strategic things you try to do, whether you want to go inside, you want to go outside, you want a little misdirection. You've seen a lot of jet sweeps. We've converted on a jet sweep. So that's the fascinating part of, of coaching. And then at the end of the day, you make sure you execute. And then, like I always say, and people forget this, the defense has a say too. And that's when it comes back down to execution or maybe one-on-one matchups. So it, that's why football is a fascinating game. Um, we certainly need to do a better job. The games we've won, we've been pretty damn good there. The games we've lost, and, you know, obviously not to, to linger in the past, but you have to acknowledge what happened when you lose, whether you win or lose, and what can you do better. And I, I take a lot of uh, personal pride in, you know, what was called, you know, what we were trying to do schematically. Was it there? Was it not? Why it didn't work? And ultimately to be objective. Yeah, they, they looked at the Riggins run in Super Bowl 17 with the eye power and the, 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 the coach in there in Super Bowl 17. Did they, did they also say that he had Russ in front of him? Yeah. Russ yeah, can move. Yeah, the Hobbs mm-hmm. moving, moving out stuff. So. As good as Riggins was. Right, right. My, man, my man Russ Graham was throttling people off the ball, too, with the 11. On his 36 carries. <laughs> That's, it was a thing of beauty. Yeah, um, no doubt. And then they have Manning throwing to Reggie Wayne out of 11 in Super Bowl 45. As a, but as an ideal uh, space in versus as one of the Riggins one with power. Sure. So they uh, the, there's a lot of ways to look at it. Uh, look at it uh, it's great. That, that's the thing. They're, they're, you can get in these arguments, and that's what I love about their sport. Mm-hmm. And you want people, I always say this, if people didn't care, we'd be playing in the park. And so that's what you love about it. And, I don't, and that's why I appreciate the fans and I love the interest. And you've got, to under, you've got to acknowledge that when you take these jobs. And then there's a lot of ways to look at it, matchups. And then ultimately, like I get a lot of old coaches would say, you put the ball in your best player's hands. Mm-hmm. I'd argue they probably did that with Peyton Manning. No offense to the rest of his teammates. There's other Hall of Famers in there, but Peyton was pretty damn good. And uh, so was John Riggins and those, those, those guys up front, Russ and the boys. So um, a lot of ways to look at it. It's the same thing when you get into analytics and the math equations, you know, the win probabilities. What is the difference between 1.2% win probability and 2.0 win probability? So you can frame the narrative. Damn near doubles your chances. Um, you know, so there's a lot of games you can play with stats and, and analytics and win probabilities. And uh, you've seen it, um, you know, work really well. And you've seen it blow up people's faces at the end of games or, you know, in playoff games. So. That's what makes this game fascinating, and ultimately, you get paid to make the right decision for your team, and that's what you got to live and, and die by, or you're judged by. And what will be the key uh, to getting the rushing attack to rebound against Detroit this week? They got uh, 27th, they're 28th. Looks like a good matchup. And Angelone down over there. 
Yeah, it changes week to week. I, mean, I understand that it does. You have to have contacts in the big picture, and we understand where we're at, and we'll work to improve uh, week over week. And certainly, um, as you get into it, again, we, we thought we had a pretty decent three-game stretch, mm -hmm. produced two wins. Um, and then, obviously, San Francisco, and I've said it before, and we'd like to get, move on to Detroit. But we need, we need to execute better, and there's going to be a challenge every week. Detroit's coming off. They've won two of the last three. That team plays extremely well. It doesn't matter who's out there. Everybody's dealing with issues, whether it's injuries this time of year, uh, flu illnesses, COVID. I know this. Dan Campbell's team will be ready to go, and they're going to play hard. Michael. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, we're probably for uh, we're Yeah, so uh, Tajay, uh, he'd be day to day. Uh, you know, things going to be tricky, but he won't practice today. We'll continue to evaluate him, and we'll just have to see. Just depends on the guys' practice. Uh, you know, we have a plan. Those guys have been resilient all year. We've had guys step up and in big roles, and uh, no matter what's come our way. So, continue that that group to me is underappreciated. Some of the little things they do. Um, so, we'll just see how the week goes. But we we got a lot of faith in those other guys. Sure. Well, I think you, you deal with the reality. I mean, I don't know Jared's situation, but I, I'd imagine you know he's got a good chance to play. Um, so you got to prepare that he he will play, and then, then you have your contingency plan. That, you know, if he continues to trend against over the week, that he doesn't. Um, but you always got to be aware of who the backups are, because if the guy, like I said, if the, the guy gets hurt in the first play, you're gonna have to face the backup, and that's doing your due diligence and doing your job as a coach. Well, I think that uh, he's been exactly who we thought he was. He's, he's impacted games uh, immensely, even though the ball hasn't found the way, his way. Um, he's, like I said, he, he, he's not even scratching the surface, guys, and he's going to have a really productive year. So I think that's stating the obvious. Is there something that maybe he's done or somebody, you know, like white people, Yeah, I mean, I think really good players make the really hard look easy and just watch some of those down the field catches. That's just not normal. Even the one um, we threw before halftime that Thomas had that he ripped away and Dan Mayer caught. I mean, that's just – just shows you a man that size, his spatial awareness and, and body control. Uh, to me, that's impressive. I know when you're watching on TV, you know, you expect it because he's a, pro, a professional athlete. Uh, but a lot of these guys, and there's a lot of good players in this league, when you watch them, it's uh, – most NFL players can't – you know, they, it's a hard play for them. And then for the layperson, it's damn near impossible. And that's why I think you uh, – and that's all across professional sports. You know, you sit there and you watch Steph Curry hit, shoot a three and the release, the, the thing of beauty, the reps that he put into that um, – it's just so damn impressive when you see it up close. And, you, and, you, and sometimes you just hope people don't take that for granted when you're watching some of these professional athletes. So, like I said, he's got a ways to go. He's a rookie. He's 21 uh, years old. Uh, he works every day. He's got the right mindset. And I'd argue he's just scratching the surface. All, off a productive year with three to go that he should impact and hopefully plays better. And that's not a negative. It's, that's the goal. Going back to the Lions, you mentioned I think that's every team in this league because that's what makes pro football what it is, is you can't – there's not 82 games. You know, you're off nights. You can't sleepwalk through it or you'll get exposed, uh, you know, not only the score but physically. And I think what you're seeing with a team like the Lions who have been resilient, there have been a lot of close games, and they broke through and, and they believe, and that's a, that's a sign of a, a culture being built. Um, but if you're not ready to go – 
that's why I said it doesn't carry over. Like we felt better about our run game. Doesn't mean we we're gonna we had to play well against San Francisco against those matchups. Well, we didn't. They had a say, and we'll continue to work. Doesn't mean it's catastrophic. Doesn't mean it can't change this week. So I think if you're not ready to go, it's the hardest thing in life to do is to sustain, especially in the National Football League with all the variables. Sure, we take a lot of pride in that. Uh, it's not lost on us. I mean, uh, again, I, uh, you know, I, I think it's always comical when guys get up here and they act like their heads in the sand, like they don't. Like we we know it. You acknowledge it. And again, every one of those situations, uh, they happen, and, and you gotta you gotta own that. But it doesn't mean that. But you don't want it because those five happen. That really will have no impact on Sunday. We'll have an impact on Sunday if we prepare, if we practice well and we got the right mindset and we can go out there and execute and play. But it means a lot. Uh, the, our fans have been great. They've showed up on the road. I love the passion of our fans, and we need to reward them with a home win. That's not lost on us. Josh? You and Dan Campbell share any points of contact? And I've met him a few times. Like a lot of people in this uh, business, you got mutual friends. Know him a little bit. Got to know him on the uh, workout circuit last year. Got a ton of respect for him. Uh, really good coach. Really good, really good person. I appreciate the way, the style his teams play. I was going to say, on the surface, you both seem to really appreciate the physicality as, as the foundation of the whole thing. Is that your view as well? Did you share that? Yeah, I think a lot of coaches do. Um, but, you know, maybe maybe there's a similar philosophy there. Um, but, but you know, Dan was a was a great player, tenacious player in this league, tough guy. Uh, you know, he, so, and you see that you've always watched his tight ends play. I was on the other side when he was the interim first game in Miami, and they came into Tennessee and got after us. Uh, got a ton of respect for him. You, want, you wanted to build this team in such a way that end of the season, your physicality is showing sure. through. It's, it's becoming an advantage. From what you see, do you see that playing out? Do you, do you see that that's? Yeah, I, I, I for the you know, we obviously um, wasn't the only one on this past Sunday. I but mean no. the game. I just mean it's sure. to put these guys on a yeah. TV. I do, yes. I wanted to ask about uh, Marlon Davidson, who had the illness that popped up Saturday at Alice in North Mississippi. He's here today and hopefully practices. And um, like we said, I mean, that's part of his job. You got to deal with the unexpected and, and deal with the with it as it as it comes. Like we'll have two guys a day that are there's other illnesses going on, regardless of what you know was in your face, 24/7. There are other illnesses going on, so we and we'll be mitigate our risk, and we'll have two players not practice today. Doesn't mean that they, you know, we'll have them on the injury report. It's not COVID. We'll mitigate our risk, and we'll continue to take care of those guys and make sure. And so there'll be two players not practicing today because of that. But and then tomorrow could bring a whole new set of circumstances. That's the reality in the world we're living in right now. So, uh, like with Marlon, like that happens on Sunday. That's why you you carry a big roster and you got inactives. Or guys, you can activate. I also want to ask about uh, Felipe Frank and what you've seen from him this season and, and him uh, being active last couple weeks. Again, a lot of it's not necessarily a, just for Josh. Felipe can play multiple roles for us. Uh, he's been a valuable roster member for us. Uh, continues to work extremely hard at his craft at quarterback. I think it's rare when you get a guy in there and he's gone in there and played special teams. Not a lot of guys will be willing to do that. Uh, Felipe's a heck of an athlete and a, and a great teammate. So a lot of those decisions are based on, you know, maybe some of the game plan somewhere else, may need to go heavy in another spot. And then, you know, we've, some weeks we've dressed three quarterbacks and Felipe has been a position player. So that, that's what's, that's not a knock on Josh, but those decisions are made every, you know, every week. Who are the two players who are not going to practice today? It'll be on the end report, but I'll give you a sneak peek for the holiday season. It'll be Dion and Tyler Davidson. They're not going to be out there, so I'm not giving you a state secret. But I got for my holiday cheer that he led. There you go, Michael. And D led didn't even ask. You asked, Michael. So. Well, I didn't get the chance. You just dropped it in there. I'm typing that two other players are sick. Got you make sure you said they're sick. They're not COVID right now. <clears throat> All right. Don't want people to run with it, and then you start rumors. Tyler Davis. Tyler Davis. Okay, there it is.
just trying to help I, you I know. I know. My, my wife gets on me sometimes about talking too fast, and maybe yeah. I don't enunciate. <laughs> I don't think that one was. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's your Santa Claus hat. It may be covering your ears. I'll, I'll let I'll let I'll, I'll let the like I'm I'm coaching the, the players and yeah. this is no knock on anybody. Yeah. It's, it wouldn't be any different than Eric Harris who's out for the season, and you know love what Eric Harris done for us. But I've got to I've got to coach and worry about getting this team ready to play Detroit. And if something were to change, I'd let you know. You know that's why you hire people mm -hmm. that work in the front office to do that job. And why, you know so again I, I that that'd be a better story for for somebody else. I think it's a it's a challenge, um, but it's a credit to him and how he's wired, and you know all the people that who he is and the people people have helped him along the way. And when he's gotten here, I mean that's uh, you know I know it's the easy thing to say, hey, you're professional, you get paid, but uh, you know some people can't handle the hype that goes with it. I mean, there's great responsibility when you take somebody there, and like I said today, we're in the most sensationalized uh, era of society because of the way the information travels, good and bad. So, you know, some people, they can't handle that hype. And that's what we've tried to, to focus on reality and kind of stay in neutral or stay in the middle, however you want to phrase it, to improve every day. Because you have good games, and like I said, they want to, they want to uh, go ahead and give you a bronze bus for Canton, and then you have your bad days, and they want to make sure that, you know, you're um, playing in the arena five league. So it, that's why it's just important to have that mindset. And it's easier said than done. It should be like, okay, everybody should do that. But we're all human. So, and, and that's what you're, you're fighting every day. What was you back in the interview process with um, you know, the Arctic Conference with Curry? What was that process like for you? Because I, hey, if I remember correctly, you were supposed to maybe have a second interview there, and then it ended up not happening. Well, I, I, I really appreciated the opportunity to talk to Detroit. Um, there's great people that, that, that run that organization. Um, and I, Again, I just focus on what my circumstances were and the opportunity I had, and thankfully it led here. Um, I think they they got a hell of a coach at GM, and it, it does, I don't know what would have, you know what have happened. They they made a good. I just dealt with what my kind of situation was, but I was always thankful for that opportunity. Was going against Detroit how do you prepare your team against a team where maybe their record doesn't show how their grit and play is, but you know you have to be. Yeah, so um, my holiday cheer for the uh, second time to answer this. I know you're a little late walking in, Anthony. So I don't know if D-Led's going to find you. Uh, it's a national football league. The short answer is the National Football League. You better be ready to go every week. I didn't say it. D-Led said that. I don't, I, don't, I, yeah, I don't need somebody trying to cancel me saying I'm, like, being you know mean to a media member. That was D-Led. I mean, now his phone's off. We lost control in here. <laughs> Sorry, Anthony. It's one of your sources. Yeah. yeah, one of your Twitter sources that probably worked in Green Bay. I mean, you didn't, you didn't even give me a good Green Bay name drop. That whether you got yeah. it off off Twitter no, or you talked talk to one of your old yeah, thing. Yeah. I, yeah, I used them all up. I saw I'm sure of, you did. A lot of Green Bay, Detroit, though. A lot of that. I feel like that's a shot at Michael. I don't care. <laughs> the way you looked at it over no, there. No, we're different periods. All right. I'm 90s. He's, he, he's uh, after the 90s. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. I, can just, I just felt some tension. I just felt some tension. That's all. It's <laughs> the Santa hat and the other yeah. stuff. You know, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I get it. <laughs> so, but lastly, um, do you all wear extra kneecaps this week since Coach Dan said that they're going to be eating off people's kneecaps this year? <laughs> <laughs> 